This is another sequel of a video series in which I test perfume samples, perfume decans, and I will tell you which ones are full bottle worthy for me. I'll review them, I'll rate them, and of course that means you might find out which ones might suit your taste as well. But which of these five perfumes I'll talk about today is the best in my opinion? Well, watch until the end. And welcome or welcome back, I'm Miri, and here we talk in about fragrances. The first perfume I'll review today is Camellia K by Ella K Perfumes and actually that is a relatively new niche brand founded in 2017 by Sonia Constant, a perfumer known for collaborating on many popular perfumes such as Narciso Rouge, Masque Noir Rose, then we have Angel Nova for Muggler, Dom Rosa for Le Liquide Imaginaire, I Want You and I Want You Forever for Jimmy Choo and both labels, La Belle Eau de Parfum and Le Parfum for Jean-Paul Gaultier, among many other perfumes she created. Now she owns her own brand and last year Ella K Parfums launched new fragrance called Camellia K. The inspiration for this perfume was a moment of admiring sun penetrating through leaves and illuminating morning dew on red camellia flowers in Sapa Valley, Vietnam. Some say that camellia flowers and dragon fruit don't have any scent at all so I was quite unsure what to expect from this fragrance but I was sure it will be good because Sonia Constant was the news behind it. And I'll tell you right away I love the opening. It has this citrusy zinginess, you get that blood orange with very sweet like a juicy sugary pear that's not listed in the notes and then you get some spicy ginger. It's so juicy it's enticing and it's so mouth-watering and also very similar to another perfume I absolutely love and that is Givenchy's L'Intardite Rouge because both have blood orange and ginger as top notes but to my nose Camellia K is definitely more citrusy it's juicier and it has more candy-like scent so this smells like the most luxurious and sexiest version of grape candies. I don't know but this is like the closest image I can imagine to what Camellia K opening smells. Of course that the scent is so much more nuanced than that but the overall combination of notes gives me that feel. 10 minutes after spraying, tuberose and jasmine come at the forefront and the freshness and juiciness from the opening continues and stays noticeable for the most of the wear. The scent also has this like like bubblegummy tuberose and it has like a tiny traces of vanilla so you need to love tuberose and white florals to enjoy this fragrance and as it dries down it gets deeper and richer woodier and earthier because of the patchouli and vetiver so the combination in the dry down smells like you're chewing bubblegum and having tuberose flower in your hair while strolling in the woods this is such a gorgeous white floral fragrance that starts 90% the same as Givenchy's L'Inter de Rouge, but they evolve and go in different directions. Camellia K is definitely more citrusy, sweeter perfume than L'Inter de Rouge, so overall this one feels much brighter and it could be worn both for day and night occasions, while L'Inter de Rouge is only a date night fragrance in my opinion. Also Camellia K has a more bubblegummy tuberose while Linta de Rouge has this like smoky spicy pimento leaf in the dry down that creates an intoxicating smoky scorched flower vibe. Camellia K is more wearable, it's beautifully blended and it feels like a niche version of Linta de Rouge but since I already own Rouge, even though I love this scent, I think it's created to seduce but it still feels uplifting, playful and refined because it doesn't have smokiness in the dry down, it's better blended and it's brighter so I think this will be more approachable and more mass appealing compared to Linta de Rouge. With Camellia K I got about 8 hours of wear with motor projection but I think the name is a bit misleading. It should be called Tuberose K because that's the most prominent note in this fragrance and now 
not camellia, although this scent does feel seductively red. I love it. I would absolutely recommend it if you love tuberose and if you want equally sexy but better blended, brighter and less challenging a version of Lintati Rouge. So I would rate its scent and performance with 9 out of 10. The new La Vie Belle Rose Extraordinaire reinterprets Lancome's iconic flower rose and it features three different types of rose notes including fresh rose water and sensual damask rose in the heart of its composition. It comes in the most beautiful bottle decorated with a sculpted rose while the wings transition from white to pink so the bottle looks exquisite but how this new release smells and performs. I like like the opening but but it's quite sharp yes it starts sharp and you get rose from the start but with this like citrusy freshness there is something green like the scent of rose stems and it has a fruity quality i know orange is listed but what i get here is like the scent of red berries or even more correct the scent of sweet juicy raspberry the opening is quite fresh it's sparkling, it's bright, and it smells like raspberries and the rose lemonade. It's delicious, it's fruity, it's floral, and it's very fresh. And then the prominent rose trio in the heart is enriched with iris, which gives powdery, a bit earthy aspect to this scent. As it dries down, rose extraordinaire becomes sweeter, so it has a powdery, sugary floral character of the original La Vie Belle. Although this is less sweet because Rose Extraordinaire doesn't have praline note you get in the original and this is more focused on the rose compared to the powdery earthy iris you get in the original. This is a sweet rose with candied jammy feel but it still has sour fresh and green facets from rose stems with musk and woody undernotes in the base which differs from the patchouli prominent dry down in the original La Vie Belle. So the dry down of Rose Extraordinaire smells like sugary and powdery rose Turkish delight decorated with green rose leaves. This is a lovely powdery candid sweet rose with green and with your facets so it never becomes too sweet and it still gives that like sour tart feel. This is a very likable La Vie Belle because challenging parts of the original are tamed here and the scent is more than pleasant but you must like rose and sugary florals to enjoy it. I feel like this new Rose Extraordinaire would be a love child between the original La Vie Belle and Hibiscus Mahajad by Mason Cree Valley. So yes, it's not very groundbreaking scent but it doesn't need to be it's pleasant it's enjoyable so i'm sure that those who dislike the original will like this new edition of course if they like rose i like this new rose extraordinaire more than the original but to be honest i don't think that the rose here is very natural nonetheless this is a beautiful year-round fragrance with a really good longevity on my skin i got about seven to eight hours of wear with motor projection it's very versatile it's quite happy uplifting scent it comes in the most gorgeous bottle Rose Extraordinaire is a perfume that can be worn by any age group. You can wear it if you're 20 or even if you're 70 years old. It would still smell good and it's appropriate for different occasions. And it deserves for its scent profile and performance 8 out of 10. The next sample I have is Memo Paris Sintra, a loved and very popular alternative for Killian's Love Don't Be Shy. It is named after a Portuguese town located on the Portuguese Riviera, not far from Lisbon. Back in the day, Sintra used to be a summer retreat for Portuguese nobility and royalty because its palace is surrounded by greenery and lush vegetation and nearby sea, which makes it look like an enchanted sea from a fairy tale. 
This perfume should embody all those warm, summery but green and pastel smells surrounding that Portuguese town. The juice is quite dark, so it might stain the lighter colored clothes. And initially, this is a very fresh, citrusy, oh, it's very green, white floral scent with a lot of neroli and a lot of petted grain. So you definitely get that green, earthy bitterness from the padded grain but this is still a very sweet fragrance that zingy citric herbaceous greenness in the opening makes Sintra a very unique take on sweet orange blossom scent profile so in the opening this is a combination of orange blossom syrup mixed with the scent of rubbing a green leathery leaf from the orange blossom tree between your fingers. The opening of Sintra is definitely polarizing. Some will absolutely love its edginess, while others will find petted grain too sharp and too pungent. So even if you don't like opening, that sharpness and green herbaceous scent will calm down after 20-30 minutes of the wear. So it will fade into a very beautiful milky sweet floral heart. The orange blossom never dissipates but rose becomes more noticeable as the scent dries down with the scent of caramel and this marshmallow dissolved in milk. So imagine you're drinking such a sweetened milk with toasted marshmallows under the orange blossom tree and next to a rose bush. This is what you get in the dry down of Sintra and I really enjoy those milky sweet floral facets in the dry down and this part is the one that will charm you and although you get like sweetness from caramel and vanilla there is still some freshness from the neroli and orange blossom that keeps this scent from being too sweet and cloy. Overall, this is definitely feminine fragrance. I can't imagine a man wearing it. It could be worn all year round, but I think it will come alive in summer and autumn. If you love marshmallow note in perfumes, I think Sintra might be a bit disappointing for you because you don't get a lot of marshmallow here. It is not very prominent, but if you like sweet orange blossom scent, you get in Killian's Love Don't Be Shy, but you thought this was too sweet, too syrupy, too sticky, and you would love some neroli or patted grain to balance its sweetness with added rose, then you will love Sintra. In my opinion, Sintra is closer to Parlez-moi de Parfum Guimauvais de Noël 31 than Love Don't Be Shy by Killian, because in Guimauvais you also get citruses and greenness that balance the sweetness, you also get marshmallow and you get orange blossom, but Guimauvais is to me a lot easier to wear than Sintra and it's definitely less polarizing. But Sintra is a performing beast. It lasts about nine hours on my skin with motor projection. It lasts for days on clothes, so no need to overspray this one, even though it is a sample. It comes in a stunning bottle. The inspiration is incredible. It truly performs and lasts, but I don't like the opening. It's it's just a bit too sharp, it's a bit too green for me, although I do like the dry down, but I won't be adding Sintra to my collection because I know I won't wear it. I don't want to wait for 30 minutes for that sharpness to calm down so I can start enjoying a fragrance. So overall, I would rate its scent and performance with 6.5 out of 10. Next, I have a little sample of Fragrance de Bois Minuet de Mi. I had two of them, but I already used up one. And many think this fragrance is named after Demi Rowling, a well-known YouTuber who worked exclusively with Fragrance de Bois and master perfumer Stefan Bengana on creating this fragrance. But actually, it's not. The name translates from French to half past midnight, and the scent tries to depict that bewitching hour and mystery of the night. With all the hype and polarizing reviews, I was so curious to try out this perfume. I was very concerned it would be like masculine or green, but it's not because it's blended to perfection. It's warm, like fiery hot scent because of the peppery cardamom with some bits of like freshness and this slightly 
sweet pastry like scent in the background. The closest thing Minuit et Demi smells to me in the opening is the scent of cardamom pastry. It's just a bit tangy but overall sweet and warm with this subtle oriental spicy vibe. I just love the opening of Minuet de Mi. I think it's so beautiful. And as it dries down, it gets sweeter due to caramel and two types of vanilla in the base. All those spices from the opening last another like three hours on my skin, but they are not as prominent anymore as they were in the opening. In the dry down, you get this like milky coffee latte caramel vibe with some boozy rum notes, some smokiness from the tobacco and spices. So I can see why this is categorized as a gourmand perfume, but it's never a gourmand perfume in an edible, sugary, sticky sweet way because spices, witty notes and this light coffee latte vibe always add some contrast and balance the sweetness. This is just an intoxicating spiked caramel boozy coffee latte or caramel frappuccino with tiny hints of woodiness and smokiness that is so smooth. As a woman and someone who enjoys sweeter perfumes, I really like that this fragrance has a sweeter side. So although it is unisex, I think this leans more feminine and what can I say? I'm just bewitched by this scent. This is a very complex fragrance that has extremely interesting and gorgeous top and very enjoyable base, but the opening Oh my god, that is mesmerizing scent. I like that it is spicy but sweet. It's a bit smoky, a bit woody and just tiny bit boozy but everything is so beautifully balanced and this is a very sexy date night fragrance. It never becomes vulgar or too provocative. It always has this elegant and expensive smelling vibe. It's like a dark academia type of sexy fragrance with mysterious sensuality. It would be better for colder months, fall and winter and for those occasions when you want to stand out. But Minuet de Mi projects softly for four hours on my skin and then it is a skin scent for another two three hours so overall it lasts about seven hours on my skin but on clothes and on this blotter I can smell it even the next day but very very softly and it's such a shame that the projection isn't better because this is a drop that gorgeous fragrance. The cardamom in the opening of Minuit at the Mi will remind you of Atelier de Haute's Lune Feline, but this is so much better in my opinion. The whole fragrance reminds me very much of another perfume I own and that is Magenta Tanzanite by Armani Privé. Tobacco and cinnamon are more prominent in Magenta Tanzanite while Minuit at the Mi is spicier, it's more peppery in the opening because of the pimento note and it's also more powdery with caramel and this milky like coffee latte vibe in the dry down that magenta tanzanite doesn't have. And I'm shocked by the amount of negative reviews Minuya Ademi has which seem more like a personal attack on Demi Rowling. And since I spent at least six hours just editing one video with all these pictures I put, I know it's very hard to grow your own YouTube channel. I'm nowhere near Dummy Rolling, and she made a huge success for herself. And because of that, I applaud her. That is very hard. So I think we should be here evaluating a scent and not somebody's personality. And scent wise, I really like Minuit de Mi, it's gorgeous, but I wish it projected better and it was a bit cheaper. So overall for its scent profile and performance, I would rate Minuet de Mi with 8 out of 10. I already own Magenta Tanzanite, so maybe if I find Minuet de Mi secondhand and for a really good price, then yes, I think I might purchase it because I think it is very addictive, it is so sexy and this is a truly beautiful perfume. 
And finally, the last sample I'll review today is the new 2024 edition called Love Delight to Amouage Secret Garden Collection. This collection is all about floral fragrances, so Love Delight is also a floral perfume, but with a gourmand twist. Also, a special honey glazed pastry note was created specifically for this scent. The light salmon color of the bottle, the inspiration of, you know, smelling Middle Eastern desserts and treats with delicate flowers and the name suggesting that this will be a delightful treat you would love got me so intrigued but how this perfume smells. The opening of Love Delight it is fresh floral scent with bits of spiciness and it's very bright. I can smell mandarin orange right away with this fresh sparkling ginger and bits of spicy cardamom but everything like everything in this perfume is so well blended and it feels smooth. It feels velvety and I just love how zest and tang from ginger and mandarin are contrasted with the sweetness of rose water and warmth of spicy ginger. The opening smells like a combination of ginger candies and cinnamon sprinkled oranges. It's glittering, sparkling, fluffy, warm, sweet and joyful scent and it doesn't change drastically in the dry down so you still get that initial spiciness and freshness of the orange and ginger and cinnamon throughout the wear of this fragrance. In the heart this becomes a very sweet white floral scent with creamy, powdery and just slightly boozy facets. In addition to powderiness, Heliotrope adds an almond aroma to Love Delight while delicate florals, orange and ginger keep this fragrance from being like cloyingly sweet or too edible or too gourmand. It smells like a fluffy orange cake with almonds, powder and decorated with jasmine flowers. And then the scent settles into a powdery cacao white floral vanilla with some boozy and green earthiness in the background because of cypriol. Cacao doesn't smell very chocolatey here but instead it brings a dry powdery and slightly bitter texture to balance the sweetness in this fragrance from vanilla. So just imagine that orange almond cake with jasmine flowers is now sprinkled with dry bitter cacao and this is what you get in the dry down. Love Delight is quite safe, easy to love, easy to understand fragrance and it definitely feels more mainstream, more approachable compared to other amouage fragrances which tend to be polarizing. So I can see why this perfume might be a bit underwhelming for some because if you're an amouage lover, if you enjoy their challenging perfumes, this might be a bit bland for you but that doesn't take away the fact that this has nuances and that this fragrance smells good. It does smell good. It is very pretty and it's a fluffy, sweet, floral type of perfume that does remind you of Arabian sweets because you got rose water, almonds, vanilla, orange, ginger and all those are used to make Middle Eastern desserts but the scent never becomes full-on gourmand. This is an all-year-round fragrance, definitely feminine and very versatile. It matches the aesthetic of the bottle, it's warm, pastel-like, softer floral and lighter gourmand with enough sweetness and freshness to make it into a lovely, uncomplicated and pretty fragrance. On my skin it lasts about 7 hours with moderate projection but as time goes on after like 3rd hour it becomes softer so it doesn't project much. I do like this scent, I really do. I think everyone would like it because it's just so pretty and if you can find it second hand or on big sale then yes this is full bottle worthy but for the current price I think it's a bit overpriced. If you're just trying to get into Amouage fragrances, then yes, I think this might be a good entry point. And overall, for the scent and performance, Amouage Love Delight gets 7.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review so far, then boop the like button, hit the notification bell and subscribe for more content coming up. And now what's left is to put these five perfumes into several categories. Love, strong like, like and...
dislike. Usually I don't have dislike category because I like most perfumes. Most of them smell just pretty and okay, but just a few rare ones make my eyes sparkle. But here I have one fragrance that I dislike because of the opening and that fragrance is... And I know you will hate me for this one, but that is Mama Paris Sintra. It has too much green herbaceous and bitter pettigrain with neroli in the opening. It's just too sharp for me. And although I really like the dry down and this is a huge performer, you know, it lasts, it projects. I just can't get past that opening. And this is a polarizing scent, so some will love it, some won't, like me. So you need to test this one on your skin and see would you like it or not. Perfume that is very nice, enjoyable and likable to me is Amouage Love Delight because I can't imagine anyone smelling it and hating it like this is pretty, like it's safe. But the reason why I'm not so excited about it and why this isn't a strong like is the price, which is too much. And the second reason is the production because for that price, I expect a bit more. And now two perfumes that are really strong likes for me are Fragrance de Bois Minuit et Demi, which has 10 out of 10 scent profile, but it could definitely have a better performance, so I will only add it to my collection if I manage to get it for a really good price. And the second one is Lancome's La Vie Belle Rose Extraordinaire, which is a very pretty Turkish delight type of rose with green accords. And finally, the one that has amazing scent profile and performance is LK Camellia K, but I won't be buying it because it reminds me too much of Givenchy's L'Intardite Rouge, which I already own, which I absolutely love. So only when I go through my L'Intardite Rouge bottle, I might consider adding it to my collection. This is what I think, but what do you think about these fragrances? Do you own any of them? And if you don't, but you had the chance to try them out, what would you say? Which ones are full bottle worth? or which ones sound the most interesting to you? Let me know in the comments and if you're still here, don't forget to boop the like button. And if you would like to see the previous episode of testing samples and finding out which ones are full bottle worthy, then check out this video next. I will see you there. Bye!